Just testing. Can you hear me? Yes, it's working. <laughs> yes, it's working. We can hear everything. Okay, before I could yeah. not get, I'm sure for the last session, my um, if, if my audio wasn't working, so I was just testing it. I'm going to mute now.
All right, we've just got a few more minutes before we get started here. Just want to make sure everyone can see my screen. Um, anyone who has a camera on, give me a thumbs up. You can see my screen. All right. Yanita, can you let me know if you can see my screen? I can see it. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Just have a few more seconds. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, just get started. Welcome. Welcome to stress management. Dear stress, let's break up. How many of you want to break up with stress? We don't need it. We don't need it. I just realized I didn't have my camera on. And I want to see y'all. Hey, y'all. How's everybody doing today? At the end of the day. Ooh, it's getting close. Yes. Yes. Well, today we are going to break up with stress, and I'm going to show you just how to do that. So thank you all for attending. Um, you know, I had my earlier session, so there was some things that I learned <laughs> that uh, hopefully I don't repeat from the earlier session but I'm not gonna stress out about it, right? So um, to get started, we are just going to do a real quick exercise. Um, I need for you all to um, sit with your palms on like the part of your knee that's quite close to your, uh, your thigh that's close to your knee, feet flat on the floor, back straight. And if you're comfortable, close your eyes, if not, you need to see what's going on around you. That's fine too. But I need for you to just take in a couple breaths, right? We're going to breathe in on a four count and exhale on a six count. And when we breathe in, I want you to be conscious of a couple things. When you breathe in, I want you to make sure that you're getting your stomach or your diaphragm involved. A lot of times when we breathe in, we breathe in all in the chest and that's it. But we want to make sure we get our stomach involved, and then you'll notice that your chest will inflate as well, all right? And I'm going to count for you, so you don't have to worry about that. And then on that six count out, just make sure you just let it go. And whatever word comes to your mind when you're letting it go, let it go. So on that six count, you're going to stress, anxiety, whatever that is, okay? So... Sitting up straight with your palms on your knees, feet flat. Go ahead and breathe in on a one, two, three, four. And then out one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's try that again. Breathe in one, two, three, four. And then out, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's release some of this tension that we have built up inside of us. Even if it may have just been from earlier today, it may have been from the last hour, maybe for the whole week, but we're gonna get rid of some of that before we get started. All right, so before, uh, we get into the presentation, just want to give you a couple of housekeeping. Um, I only have you for an hour, so I don't have a moderator for the chat. So if uh, so, it's not mon monitored or anything. So if you put any questions in there, I can't see the chat while I'm doing my presentation. It kind of messes everything up. So if you have any questions, we're going to go ahead and save those for the end if we have time to address any questions. I'm going to ask that you stay on mute unless I ask a question and then, you know, anyone can pop off uh, mute and, you know, respond, but then I'll need for you to get back on mute. So always make sure that you're on mute. Questions will be taken at the end. And then also in the chat, um, I'll make sure that there's a post evaluation that I'll provide in the chat that I would love for you to complete so that I know and my bosses know that this is meaningful. Uh, information and that we're on target or if there's anything that we need to tweak. All righty. So thank you for 
that in advance. Little bit about me, won't bore you with reading everything. Main thing I just wanted to say is that I come from uh, different backgrounds. I'm new to the district. I'm actually new to this whole um, area. Um, but I come with a lot of backgrounds. So I have a lot of different perspectives that I'm bringing um, to this department, but then also to um, my training. And so um, my biggest thing is that I enjoy different perspectives um, on old ideas. So nothing that you will we'll do today or talk about today is like rocket science or brand new. It, I'm hoping that it just gives you a different perspective on how to view that thing. So indulge me throughout this one hour that I have with you. Uh, you will walk away today with a better understanding of stress, knowing the difference between good and bad stress. Yes, there is good stress, and we'll talk about that. Identify the cause of stress or causes, actually, of stress. Recognize stress triggers and determine ways to either reduce or eliminate stress in your life. Ready to get going? Let's go. All right, does this look familiar to anybody? Can you see yourself in this? <laughs> When I saw these pictures, I saw myself. I like whether it is at work or at home or work home and all the other activities that's going on, it just seems like it is nonstop. I don't have enough arms, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough capacity to do all of this. So what does that make me? Stress. Again, I'm stressed just looking at it. So right now I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to talk about, or well, not necessarily talk about, to, to display what you're feeling right now. So on your computer, if you have a desktop or a laptop, this is gonna be much easier. I'm not really sure where to look for this on the phone, but if you go to the top of your screen, the very top of your screen, this drop down comes, or you'll see where Rika's sharing her screen, and next to it, it will say uh, view options. If you click on view options, down um, one of the menu items says annotate, A-N-N-O-T-A-T-E. If you click on annotate, and it gives you another little menu, and I want you to click on stamp. And when you click on stamp, it'll give you some options, a check mark, X, heart, um, so we're going to stay on stamp. Try not to click on anything else but stamp. And I want you to put a check mark on the tag, whether it's calm, happy, excited, stressed, overwhelmed, or tired. Put a check mark what you're feeling right now. Get it out. Get it out. Yes. And if you have made your selection on what you're feeling right now, I want you to put a heart or a star on the tag that you want to feel. Somebody has an arrow on calm. Ready to go. <laughs> And that was earlier today, for some reason I was tired and I don't know why I was tired earlier today, but I had to get that out, check it out. A lot of people want to be happy and excited, calm. It's pretty cool. I don't see a whole lot of people stressed, but that's pretty cool. Very nice, very nice. I just wanted to give everyone an opportunity to just, you know, because it's a, a large group and I only have an hour, we don't have time to talk. And I'm, I love in-person training where we can actually, you know, get each other's energy and talk about it. But this is a good way to just kind of get engaged into the, or participate in the uh, training. 
I got you, Miss Lisa. Very nice. All right, I'm going to clear these off and we'll move to the next one. And I'm going to, well, for all those who did not have an opportunity to participate in this part, you'll have another chance. So if you just found it, don't worry, we'll, we'll get to you. Does this look familiar? How many people want to bang their head when they are stressed? I know I do. I know I do. But it is the most ineffective way to manage your stress. Don't bang your head on the, the desk. It will not work. It does not eliminate your stress. So what happens, and this is kind of like a bunch of technical stuff that is, I think is worth mentioning, but don't worry about memorizing. You know, people, when people become stressed, the HPA axis activates and the uh, let me make sure I say this right, glucocorticoids release into the blood, including the hormone cortisol. And these may reduce the volume in the hippocampus, and that's the part of the brain that affects how we react to emotions. The important part that I want you to remember is that when the hippocampus shrinks, this may lead to uh, symptoms of depression, right? So, so basically, in a nutshell, when you are stressed, like overwhelmed stress, parts of your brain shrinks. And when that happens, it limits your perspectives. It limits your options. You ever say, I'm so stressed, I can't even think. Well, the reason that you can't think is because you're, you're, the parts of your brain are shrinking and it is kind of squeezing down and now you have no options. You're either, I can't do anything else. Have you ever felt like that or heard people say, I'm so stressed out, I, I can't even do anything. I can't move. Stress can be very paralyzing, right? Because your options, that part of your brain that, that holds your options and your choices and your perspective, it shrinks, okay? So it's good to know that's not something that I knew. But that's good to know that, you know, when I'm stressed, I need to make sure that I'm still functioning. And it's hard to when we become overstressed. All right. Uh, the hippocampus has a major role in the learning and the memory. How many get forgetful when it comes to um, when you get stressed? That's, it happens. So there's good stress and there's bad stress. So let's think of stress as like the last name. We got good stress, you know, and bad stress. Good stress is, is for like excitement. It's for inspiration. It's, it motivates you. It gives you focus, energy, and it enhances your performance. You know, there's, there's that stress gets you out of bed. That stress gets you going. It gets you to work, right? There's good stress. Now, some people say, oh, uh, you know, get me to work does not make it good, but it, it gets you moving. That's good stress. That's what stress is supposed to do. But you know how it is. Any time you have too much of a good thing, it um, teeters over to the bad side. It's not, it's not good anymore. It becomes exhausting. You get jittery, anxious, and your concentration is, becomes, begins to diminish and you have decreased uh, performance. So we want to make sure that we don't get too much of a good thing, okay? So in managing those emotions, the and folks think that, oh, this is this is where I am and and I have no control. this is this is all I have. I, I can't do anything else. There's nothing I can do about it. But we know that there's, with every good thing, there's a bad thing. You know, whatever, um, anytime there's an um, a action, there's a reaction, okay? So there's a choice, basically. When you have anxiety, you have an opportunity to, to be calm. It doesn't feel like it in the moment, but you do, right? Attitude is everything. How you approach something is how you're going to handle it, right? Irritability. The other side of that is good humor. 
So if I'm irritable, if I'm just like, oh, like I'm just mad, just irritated by something, that is something I control. No one can make me irritable. I can choose to be irritable or I can choose to find something funny or some kind of humor in everything. Depression is real. And a lot of times in some communities, it's not acknowledged. People don't want to, that stigma of being depressed. But if you don't acknowledge that, then you won't ever act on it. So, but you, do you have to stay stuck in depression? Is that a condition that you're bound to now that you have experienced it? No, you have a choice. You can be cheerful. You can find something cheerful or it's something to be cheerful about. It's not always easy, but it's possible. You know, how many of us have mood swings? You know, sometimes it just, it, it is what it is. We're not always up, we're not always down, but you know, that, that pendulum swings from one end to the other. But when we're mindful of what it is that we're putting out, our mood, we can control that. Because if you'll notice on the one column, it had the anxiety column, memory and concentration issues. Again, your hippocampus shrinks and you, you can't think straight. And now I can't pull out something that I know. Sometimes it's the words. I can't pull out, you know, a good decision because I'm stressed. But if I go to my calm side, if I go to the side where I find humor and things, I try to be cheerful and I'm mindful of what's going on around me, it builds my capacity and it actually has health benefits. So here I'm gonna show three videos back to back. Um, for the sake of time, we won't be able to go over them, but it talks about how the stress affects, affects the body, how it affects the brain, and then ways that you can cope with the stress. Because if you look at this uh, picture here, are you typically stressed or are you typically calm? Because we have habits. You know, sometimes we go straight to the stress. And sometimes we go to, you know, some people, like no matter what, it doesn't seem like nothing shakes them. But here's some things that happen when you get stressed out. Your pupils expand. And then you get those, those fast breaths. You know, that's where your anxiety starts to kick in. Your heart pumps faster. And then, you know, you get either sick to your stomach or you can't eat. But when you're calm and you, you, you remain calm in a situation, your pupils shrink. You take those deep, slow breaths that we took earlier today. And then your heart slows down. And then you can stomach whatever comes your way, right? So let's try the video. Okay. So oh, my thing is here is in front. Okay. Here we go. Stress is something that we all experience sometimes. When problems and pressures get too much, we can start to feel overwhelmed and struggle to cope. Everyday pressures like work, money, and family worries can place huge demands on us, as can big life events like losing your job, family breakdown, or the death of someone close. The stress bucket is a helpful way of thinking about your problems and finding different ways of looking at what's causing your stress. Imagine that you carry a bucket with you. As the day goes by, different problems and demands fill up your bucket. When your bucket overflows, the stress can make you angry, anxious, or sad. The good news is there are things that you can do to manage these problems and stop your bucket overflowing. Try and exercise a bit more, eat well, and get more sleep. Get support by talking to someone you trust and telling them how you feel. Make a list to help break problems down and think about your priorities. What smaller tasks should you tackle first? Try the relaxation ideas on the Mindball website. Take a short break, practice breathing techniques, and find the things that work for you. Making these small changes can feel good, like turning on a tap to release some of the pressure you're feeling. A 
Explore the MindWell website for more helpful tools and ideas for coping with stress and keeping your buckets from overflowing. All right, keep your bucket from overflowing. Minimize the amount of stress that you allow to take in. Stress is a normal part of life, and it's not always bad. In the right amount, it can motivate you to get things done. But stress becomes harmful if it's overwhelming or long-term. When you're stressed, the fear center in the brain, called the amygdala, takes over. The brain sends out a distress call, which results in the adrenal glands, located above the kidneys, releasing hormones that speed up your heartbeat and breathing, and push more blood to your muscles. Once the threat passes, your stress response winds down. For our prehistoric ancestors being chased by wild animals, this fight-or-flight response could be very useful, but in the modern world, it's a problem when the perceived threat never goes away. When the brain is under constant stress, it can change in ways that make you even more vulnerable to stress. A constant flood of stress hormones can also do damage by weakening your immune system, leaving you more prone to infections. It may trigger inflammation that puts you at greater risk for conditions like heart disease and diabetes. Learning how to cope with stress can help minimize these effects. Try practicing relaxation techniques like meditation, yoga, or deep breathing. Do at least 30 minutes of moderately intense exercise like brisk walking on most days, which can calm your body and mind. Get at least seven hours of sleep. Seek support from friends and loved ones, and if necessary, talk to a mental health professional. The better you're able to handle stress, the less likely that life's bumps will knock you off track. And then one more, ways to cope with stress. Stress. Everyone experiences it both at work and in their personal lives. It's often caused by changes in the world around us that we can't control. But what we can control is how we cope with and react to stress. Let's take a look at some strategies for dealing with it. Make time for hobbies and self-care. When we're stressed, we have a tendency to focus on the things that are stressing us out and we lose sight of taking care of ourselves. It's important to find some time in your schedule to relax or do what you enjoy. This can give you a renewed sense of energy and well-being. Use time management skills. There may be times where projects and tasks just start to pile up and you feel trapped under it all. This could be due to procrastinating or taking on too much work. Try listing out your tasks and prioritizing them. This can make it easier to get through them, and who knows, you may even find some tasks that are unnecessary or that you can delegate to others. Exercise. Stress often makes us tired and increases our anxiety. Studies have shown that over time, exercise can help to reduce anxiety levels and make you feel more energetic. Find an activity that you enjoy, whether it's walking, swimming, or something else, and try fitting it into your schedule a few times a week. Remove unnecessary sources of stress. While you can't control the changes that happen to you, there may be certain stressors that you can eliminate. For example, you could try limiting your access to daily news, spending less time on social media, or reducing the number of new projects you take on. While stress is inevitable, it's important to remember that there are always ways of managing it and improving the quality of your life. GCF Global, creating opportunities for a better life. So there are ways to cope with the stress. It definitely affects your body and it definitely affects your brain. And I don't know if we always think about that when we're in stress. We just think that this is something that we just have to deal with, but we don't. But how do you cope with, with stress? Have you ever really thought about that? Or 
does it just come on you and you just say, okay, I'm stressed right now and I'll just wait for it to pass? Do you have a, a thing that you do when you're stressed out? Do you breathe? Do you sleep? Uh, do you have uh, retail therapy? What What is your thing that you do that helps you cope with stress? And where did you learn that coping mechanism? Did you learn that from uh, family? Did you learn that from, um, you know, it? however you cope with it is how you got your attention or how you got people off of you. So you just kept with that. Or it, it, is it just something that has just become a habit? And you know what? When I get stressed, I break down. I don't know why. This is what I do. And this is what I've done. And I don't know what else to do. Do we ever really think about that? What stress behavior do you want? Do you want to be able to conquer stress? Do you want to be able to be in control of stress? and allow the good stress in and, and tell the bad stress, look, I don't have time for you today. Because we have that power to do that. A lot of times we are so buried underneath stress that we don't think we have that power. We, we can't find it because our brains are, you know, the hippocampus is, 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 shrunk, is shrinking and now I have no options. This is all I can do. This is all I have. I talked about capacity before with someone. I, I once heard it said that you can't expect a gallon out of pint-sized people. But then I talked to someone else and they kind of expanded my, my thought process on that when they said, you know, sometimes people are a gallon, but they only have a pint for you, right? So you're expecting people to give you everything. You expect for them to give you more, but they're so stressed out and they're so so stretched out that they only have enough, a little bit to give you. And sometimes we are so stressed out, we only have a little bit left or we're about to break. But we can say, you know what? I don't wanna feel like this. I don't want to be anxious. I wanna be calm. And our words are powerful. If we call it out, it'll happen, right? I'm stressed, guess what happens? I get stressed. If I say I'm calm, it may take a minute, but if I say it enough, I'm going to be calm. Because in calm, my breathing, I'm thinking more about. I'm being more conscious about my, be my stress behaviors or things that I want out of it. So have you ever really thought about, or I want you to be more reflective when you are in your stress situation, to make sure that you know where that comes from and how you, how you cope with it, and if you can do better. So I'm gonna give you guys another opportunity. Uh-oh, let's go back. Give you an opportunity to annotate again. All right, so go to the top of your screen. If you are on a computer, uh, I think it's view options, I believe. And what I want you to do is go to stamp, and then put a heart or a check or a star on the, um, the stress management that you typically use. What's your go-to? Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I got to give you guys access. All right. It wasn't you. It was me. Okay. Try it now. There we go. Exercise. Music. I am very much music motivated, but I have to be real careful because if I'm down, um, I don't need to listen to slow music. <laughs> so we can't do anything that's going to be counterproductive to what it is that we're trying to do. Excellent. I'm surprised I don't see any yoga. My 10 o'clock had a bunch of yoga in there. Meditation. That's something that I want to get better at. Time management. Wow. That, that definitely manages your stress. I had someone earlier had mentioned that um, 
They give themselves an extra 10 minutes if they have to be somewhere just so that they can minimize their stress. So they're not rushing in and have to go straight to whatever it is they have to do. So they just factor in some extra time. Very nice. Very nice. Therapy. I'm glad someone has therapy on there. A lot of times we, we don't want to admit that we need therapy. And therapy is not always going to pay someone to sit on their couch. Sometimes therapy is just getting with your good girlfriend and saying, listen, I need to talk. I need to get this out of my head. I am, I am, it's too much. I don't need any help. I don't need you to, to fix me. I don't need you to problem solve. I just need to get it out. That's therapy. Sometimes we take things and we, we figure it, it has to be this big, big thing and it, and it doesn't. Let's make things a little more bite-sized so that we can go ahead and, and, and digest it. So therapy, spa, music, time management, no yoga. I want to learn yoga. Very nice. Thank you all for participating. I wish we were in person so that we can actually kind of break this down and talk about it. All right, get back in here. All right, so it's awesome to have those stress relievers, those things that like, oh, I just need a break. I just need to go and, and, and do some yoga or meditate and that relieves my stress. But if you don't establish healthy boundaries, you're going to go back to that stress. It's like a hamster wheel. You are going to get off of it, go do what you got to do, power up, and then go straight back to that wheel of stress because you haven't set any boundaries. And bound, there are benefits to having boundaries. It's beneficial for emotional and psychological well-being. It helps you define who you are to other people because we teach people how to treat us. Right. If if I don't set boundaries, then I'll accept everything that you do to me. And that's going to stress me out. So I have to set some clear boundaries. I have to set some expectations. I have to let you know, hey, this is as far as you can go with me. And if I don't, I'm going to be stressed out. It helps me manage my stress. If I set some boundaries, then I'm not accepting your stress on me because sometimes people will stress dump. I'm stressed, so I'm going to take this off my plate. I'm going to throw it on yours. No, no, I have some boundaries. Unless it's something that I am required to do, I have a choice. It limits the um, exposure to that, uh, that adrenaline. You know how, you know, sometimes people, you know, get so stressed out, they kind of go ziggity boom. That's the word I use. They just take off like, Ugh, it's too much. But you set those boundaries, some of that stuff doesn't even get close to you. It helps with your decision making based on your best interest, not on the interest of someone else putting or projecting their interest onto you. And it helps to diminish that disappointment and anger and frustration and resentment in relationships. Again, it is all about setting clear boundaries and high expectations. And this is something that you have to know for yourself. Otherwise, other people will give that to you. You don't want other people to define your boundaries. You define your boundaries. So how do you reduce stress? How do we do that? Well, well, first of all, we got to see it coming. Know your triggers. Again, a lot of times stress comes on us and we're just like, oh, I'm about to get stressed. So sometimes we see it and we call it out. We're about, I'm about to get stressed. Um, stress is coming. I know I'm going to be stressed today. I got a lot going on. I looked at my calendar. Oh, it's going to be a stressful day. Sometimes we do see it and we call it out, but we do nothing about it. We just say, well, that's just, it is what it is. But if you know your triggers and you see it coming, you have some options. Accept the things that you cannot change. You cannot change people and you cannot change the weather. So there are some things that are outside of your control. The only thing that you can change is you. You can change your mindset. You can change your thought process. You can change 
the way that you deal with stress, the way that you don't deal with stress, you can change you. You can't change other people. So we can't blame it on, well, uh, Sally made me stress. I'm sorry if there's a Sally on the, <laughs> on the group, just using the name Sally. Sally made me stress. Did Sally make you stress or did you choose to be stressed based on what Sally did? Because Sally can't control you, only you can. So accept the things that we cannot change. Accept the things that we cannot control. We cannot control people and we cannot control technology. I mean, anyone who's ever deal, dealt with technology <laughs> knows that it is a bear. But do we get so upset that we say, oh, you know what? This technology sucks, I'm stressed. It's just stressing me out. Or do we take the alternative and say, you know what? I can't control technology. It is what it is. If this technology is not working, um, I would hope that you don't find that as a, a black mark against me because the technology is not working. Now, it may be something I need to learn in order for it to not happen again, but I can't get stressed out about that. I can't control it. I have to think positive because my response and my reaction makes a difference. It, it determines how I'm going to show up in this world. And if everything is negative first, uh, you know, sometimes when negative Nancy walks in the room, people kind of like, you know, try to act like they're working because they just don't need any more negativity in their mind on the, in, I'm just, I don't need it. I don't need the negative energy. It's almost like it's taboo to think and speak positively. If you say something positive in a negative situation, it's like, what's wrong with you? Oh, you think that? Ah, oh, good for you. It's like, no, no, it's okay. Let's think positive because thinking positive reduces my stress. And research those things and implement those relaxation techniques that work for you. You. I may say I'll do yoga. I haven't yet, but if I if yoga is for me, that doesn't mean that that's going to reduce your stress. Some people get stressed out thinking about yoga. That may not be their thing. So you don't have to, you know, go with the crowd. You have to do what works for you. And that means that you may have to try out different things. You may have to try yoga. Don't just knock it. Try it. Say, OK, you know what? And you do it and you say, no, no, no I mean, it's not really my thing. Okay, then go on to something else. But give yourself options. One of the reasons that we get so stressed out is because we think it's this or that. We don't think that it's both and, this and that. Or I have this in my, my toolkit. I have this in my toolkit. I have this in my tool. I mean, if you have, see a tool guy, he doesn't just have a screwdriver, a wrench, and a hammer. He has a whole lot of tools just in case there's uh, something that he comes across he, he can't use a, a hammer, a, a screwdriver, and a wrench for. We can have a toolbox full of techniques to be able to deal with our stress. And one of my favorites is sleep. We have to give our body a chance to replenish and rejuvenate. So. You know, that, that whole notion of uh, I'll sleep when I die is for the birds. You, know, you, you sleep while you're here. It's like, you know, taking your, your cell phone and saying, I'm going to use this for three years without ever recharging it. Some people can't use this for three hours without recharging it. Same with sleep. Our body needs rest. Some need more than, than other, but you have to rest. You have to give yourself pause to replenish, to, to, to rejuvenate, to give your chance, your mind a chance to just rest so that it can, you know, be better for you the next day or when you wake up. So reclaim control over your stressful situation. So I found this uh, out there on the internet, four A's to stress management. Avoid unnecessary stress. What's unnecessary stress? Stuff that you don't have to have. 
Sometimes we take on other people's stuff. And then we get stressed out because we have enough of our own. And now I take on your stress. And now I take on your stress. I mean, how many of us take on our family stress or our kids stress? How many of us take on our, you know, our co-worker stress or, you know, our good girlfriend or our, our, you know, good friend? How many, we take on their stress. We take their load and carry it and wonder why we can't function. So avoid unnecessary stress. If this is something that you have a choice, make the choice. I'm not taking that. That's not mine. That's my favorite. Now, a friend of mine gave me that uh, a few years ago. Is that yours or is that mine? That's not mine? Okay. I know it. I, you know, I may, I'm not going to forget it possibly, but I'm not taking that on. Alter the situation if you can. There are some things that you don't have control over and there are some things that you do. So think about that, that thing. Do, is there another way that I can do this? For example, the, the one person from 10 o'clock session said that she comes to work or gets to a place 10 minutes early because she knows that if she gets in and has to go straight in, she gets stressed. So her, she alters her situation by controlling or managing her time. Adapt to the situation. The things that you cannot change, adapt. If you know that this building is going to be here, but you would rather it be across the street, you adapt. Come to this building. You can't change that. And accept the things that you cannot change. Accept it. You may not like it, but accept it. Why? Because that either reduces or eliminates some of your stress. So avoid, alter, adapt, and accept are four, the four A strategies to reclaiming control over stressful situations. And in that, I, I think it's worth mentioning when there is a stressful situation, often, maybe not always, but there's often time where you can actually take pause and think about it. We don't have to be reactive all the time. Take a pause, take a moment to say, you know what, is this mine? Take a pause, Ugh, can I change this? Take a pause, oh, man, is, is this something that, that I have to deal with? Ask yourself these questions. Instead of just allowing this emotion, this stress to come over you. I always say, you know, bad stress is, is a terrible driver. So don't give it the key. You take control. You drive your emotions. Your emotions don't drive you. So right now, we're going to take a moment. And we don't have time um, in this one hour session to actually do this together. But I'm going to give you the key to um, you know, unlock the mystery of reclaiming your stress or uh, reclaiming your, your control over stress, okay? Because we're going to, or you're going to write a dear bad stress, because that's bad is the first name, bad stress. We still want our good stress. I'm gonna write a letter. Just like a dear John, anyone who's familiar with a dear John letter, it's like we're breaking up. And you know how it is if you've ever broken up with anybody or if they've broken up with you, just because you break up don't mean that you won't see each other again. It just gives you those boundaries, right? We're gonna set boundaries. We're not gonna be friends with benefits or anything like that. We're not gonna be friends and, and, and you still get to come. No, bad stress. I can still know you. I see you coming. I'm gonna handle you accordingly. But we're gonna write a, a, a breakup letter. Today, we're going to break up with bad stress. And in this letter, you are going to include the date. Why? Why do you want the date on the letter? You want the date on the letter because you want a reference point. Three years from now, when you look back at this letter, you're going to be able to say, wow, anxiety had a hold on me. 
but I broke up with it. I'm so much farther away from anxiety than I used to be. So you have to document when it happens so that you can track your progress. And name that stress or stressor. Because you won't address anything that you don't acknowledge. And don't give it a cute name or anything like call it what it is. If it's anxiety, address it as anxiety. If it's Tom, if Tom is your stressor, name Tom. Fear, depression, whatever that thing is that stresses you out, name it. And then you're going to show some gratitude. Now, this is where you're going to think I'm crazy. But you're going to show some gratitude to that stressor, right? Because again, stress, there's good stress. And so stress shows up for a reason. And oftentimes it shows up to get us to, to move. Sometimes it, it gets us to, um, to react or respond. Sometimes it, it, it shows up to protect us. So you want to thank it for the reason that it showed up in the first place. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you, depression. You showed up because you didn't want me to go ziggity boom. And, and, and this was your way to kind of calm me down and hold me back. Thank you for trying to protect me. Thank you, anger, for showing up because, you know, um, if, if you didn't show up, somebody may have taken advantage of me. There's a reason that that emotion showed up. So thank you for showing up. But you got to tell it what it's doing to you. Describe that physical, you, you know, thank you for showing up, but you, you, you're being overprotective. And your overprotection causes me to have headaches, or it causes me not to be able to think straight, or it causes me to, to physically, you know, not be able to function. It causes me to go into this deep funk that I can't get out of quickly. So describe what it's doing to you. And then name the positive thing that you want your emotion to do. I can't deal with you, uh, anxiety, because I, I want to be calm. I want to sleep. <laughs> you know, this, this, this stress is keeping me from being at my best. So I'm not even in a running for a promotion. And then you end that relationship. You tell that relationship, listen, I want a better life. So we're done. And then you close it. And when you close it, you can close it with your name. Or you can close it with what you want to be. Right? Sincerely, Rika. Or sincerely, I'm going to get me some sleep at night. Okay, it doesn't have to be that long, but sincerely, healthy heart. Sincerely, all rested. Those are the elements of your dear bad stress letter. I want to make sure, I want you to make sure that you include these things, even if it sounds crazy. But if you're having a conversation with someone when you're breaking up with them, these are some of the things that you say when it's a healthy breakup. Hey, you know, today, John, you know, thank you for being in my life as long as you've been and, you know, all the things that you've added to my life. But, you know, it's kind of going a little bit too far and I'm not really able to function. And I want to be able to function. So we got to end this. Sincerely, or thank you, Rika. Doesn't have to be this drawn out thing. And when you do this letter, make sure you do a separate letter for each stressor. Right? You don't want to jam it all up because then everything gets all confused. Identify it. One stress letter, break up at a time. And go easy on yourself. Whatever you do today, let it be enough. You know, I say inch by inch is a cinch, but a mile will take a while. It's 
going to seem like you'll never be able to conquer this thing, but you will. You just have to give it time. You have to practice. If, if you handle, if your stress habit has been this, if that's been your go-to for you know, 30, 40 years, you, it, you may not just turn around and all of a sudden just be great at this thing. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some time. But work it. Work at it. Do the things that will help you reduce or eliminate your stress. So my uh, kind of parting words, be intentional. Like coping with stress and stress management and all of that stuff, it, it's not a one and done. It is not a, you know what, I'm going to just, I'm going to think it, I'm going to think it, I'll think it, and oh, oh, you know what, I'll think it, okay, yep, yep, tomorrow, I'll handle stress. It's not that simple. You have to intentionally tackle your stress. You have to um, think about ways that's going to work for you to, to deal with this or manage this stress. There's no quick fix. It involves intentional reflection, rework, and repetition. And sometimes the whole reflection part is what stumps us because we don't want to look at those things. We don't want to address it. We don't want to identify it. We just, we just want it to go away. And that's not how it works. It has to be intentional. You have to be reflective. You have to think about the things that you don't want to think about so that you can deal with those things. Stress won't manage itself. It'll try to control you. It's like it'll it'll push its way and bogart its way over on you, but it won't manage itself. You have to manage stress. You have to do the work and you can do it. You can do it, but you can't give up. It's going to take time. Give yourself some grace. It's going to take time. Take one stress at a time. Stick with it and give yourself grace. It is a process. It is a learning. And it is definitely, I'm a witness, worth the effort. So at this point, I'm going to have you either stand up or you can stay seated. Depends on where you are and how comfortable you are. Um, but I want you to... Have your feet shoulder lengths apart. And I want you to reach for the sky as high as you can. Stretch, reach, reach, reach. And then go to the side. Stretch. Try to touch one wall to the other wall. Stretch. And then arms down to the side and just shake them. Then if you can, go ahead and bend over. And just let your arms hang. Stretch out that spine. Breathing. And then come up. Now I want you to take your right hand on your left arm and just pull all the stress out and throw it out. I want you to do that with the opposite hand, left hand, right arm, take it and just stretch, pull, pull all the way to the fingertips, throw that out, do a little shake. All right, sometimes we have to do that. We have to remember, breathe, stretch, get our blood circulating. Get that blood, the oxygen going in our, in our blood with the breathing. And that way it gets up to our brain so that we can function. That concludes my presentation. And I'm a little off on time. I didn't start my timer on time. I don't see what time it is right now, but if we have time, if anyone 
wants to come off and just maybe mention whether, you know, if there was a technique or if there was something in here that was valuable to you. I just wanted to tell you that I, I uh, oh, somebody else can talk first. If no, they, go ahead. Go ahead. You have, I you just have wanted to tell you how I really appreciated when you talked about writing the letter about thanking um, the depression or the anxiety or the anger, or the stress, because at first I was taken aback by that. And I thought, why would I thank it? I'm angry at it. And then as you went on to explain how, depending on what issue 